Well, first of all, obviously, the, uh, the, the first thing I've got to say is congrats on the R-66. We've just spent uh, about an hour flying uh, air to air in, in one and, and watching some real interesting maneuvering parameters and then flying the aircraft itself from somebody who came up through the R-22 and earned my CFIH and, uh, and the 22 Larry DeRocher and flying the 44 over the years and being really uncurrent right now, the transition to the 66 is about as easy as it gets, and that's a lot to say for an aviation journalist. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're, uh, we're real proud of the, uh, the R-66. One of the markets that we obviously uh, foresaw was the, was the person who perhaps learned in a 22 or a 44 and now needs to carry more weight or needs more altitude or has other reasons why he wants to move up to the R-66. And so we wanted to try and make that transition as uh, simple as we could and work with the things that the, uh, the, the pilot already knew. Well, let's address the initial issues first. The aircraft is now certificated and in production. And as I understand it, you're going to follow a path that you've followed previously with keeping initial ships local and in the hands of folks that you've worked with uh, closely before and, and get as much data early on as possible before these things start getting uh, out and about. Yeah, initially the first uh, ships are going to California and then uh, we'll have Arizona kind of spreading out over the uh, uh, western half of the United States. After that, we, we are pushing to deliver some to some of our overseas dealer only because they want to get their certification process going and get it done as quickly as they can. But the initial deliveries will be uh, here locally and uh, we'll be flying, uh, having them fly those aircraft as much as they can and, and then we'll be uh, checking up on them as they go along. So the production rate for the moment is going to be about uh, two per week, working out to about four per week by the end of the year? At this point, we're just, our goal, and here we are in November, is to, uh, to deliver 10 of them before the end of the year. And then after that, at the start of the year, it'll be two, two per week and gotcha. then move on up to uh, three per week. As quickly and as feasible as possible, but not to put any undue pressure in order to just get ships out. Because, you know, what we want to do is to make certain that, they all, that they're out there right and that there's no, uh, no startup issues or anything. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Now, where do you see the worldwide market for this aircraft? Have you, have you gotten a rough idea at this stage of the game of just what the what kind of life the R-66 is likely to have? Boy, you know, the, the interest has been all over. And it's, uh, you know, some of the reasons why we developed it are for those holes that we saw in the marketplace. You know, in one case, it's just because people want to have a five-seater and they want to have a baggage compartment. But in other cases, it's because they needed altitude. And now you've got something that can really, you know, that's why you move into a turbine because now you can you can start performing really well up above, you know, six, seven, eight thousand feet. The other reason is, you know, now that you've you've gone from a switch to a piston to a turbine, there are, are large swaths of the earth where avgas is very difficult to get. Mm -hmm. uh, you start going all through uh, Africa and and even uh, places like Europe where maybe it's 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 more readily available, but it's much more expensive. Mm -hmm. And here in the United States, people are surprised by that. But, um, you know, I've heard reports that, that Avgas can be twice the price of, of Jet A. Um, you have areas of Asia and South America where it's very, very difficult to get Avgas. So this opens up those market opportunities. There's also the governments around the world that a lot of them have standardized or fixed on the jet A or on the turbine, they don't want to have a, uh, a military trainer or a police ship or to do some you know, government study and, then ha and use a ship that uses avgas when all of their other equipment is jet A. So it, it gives us that opportunity also. Now one of the things that immediately comes to mind when you see the 66, especially with some of the inroads of 44 made into police and ENG, is that with the amount of power available now, the additional room and, and a couple of other aspects, boy, what a market. What an amazing market, especially when you consider what people are having to pay right now to put the field turbine ships in those markets at the moment. Well, you know, that's, that's kind of an interesting point because one of the things that I am pretty certain of is that actually once we develop a, a police version of the R-66, which we, will, we plan to do hopefully by mid next year, is that I actually think that it will 
increase the sales of our R44 police mm -hmm. helicopter. And, and primarily it's because now when I have somebody that comes and looks and they say, well, geez, you know, all you have is a, is a piston engine. The only reason you're telling me to, to buy that is because you don't have a turbine. But now I have both. Mm -hmm. and, and actually in, in a lot of what the police do, especially if they're not at altitude or anything, it is a two-man patrol ship. And you can do that job just as well in R44 as you can do in a 66 or any other turbine. So the fact that I'll be able to point to them and say, well, here's the R66. I can give you everything you want in that. You can have a turbine. But... Now you're going to be burning 22, 23 gallons an hour versus 15 gallons an hour. Your acquisition price is higher. Um, does it really make sense for you? And and where it doesn't, I I think they'll they'll give us another look. But it's not because we're not selling piston now just because that's all we have. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result. The gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. Is there much of a transition from having been a piston helicopter company for so many years to getting into the turbine groove? Have you seen much of a change in your modus operandi at this point? Certainly no change in our philosophy. It's just a different engine. We're obviously now working with, you know, instead of Lycoming, we're working with uh, Rolls-Royce. And uh, at this point, I can't say enough good things about both companies. They've been very easy to work with, very excited about the product they've worked with. They've uh, um, worked with us to try and achieve what it is we want to do which is a, a low-cost, reliable helicopter, and in their case, a low-cost, reliable engine. And that's, that's what we're all, uh, all focused on. Because we're so much an engineering company, uh, it, uh, I think it makes it easier in some ways to work with these, these different companies. Well, the 300, of course, is a new engine for any aircraft. You're the first manufacturer to adopt it, and of course, it's so expected it's going to have a pretty bright future. But a new ship with a new engine is kind of a really aggressive profile for any manufacturer to take on. But then again, of course, you're dealing with roles, and it's not like they haven't been through this ball game a few times in the past. How has this experience been? With the Rolls Royce, they've really just taken the 250 mm -hmm. and they've just modernized it. You know, they simplified it. They've done everything we've asked for: a single stage compressor. They brought, you know, all we needed was 300 horsepower. So we brought all those things back, asked them to simplify it, and then figure out ways so that we could all reduce the cost on it. In terms of that, it's it's actually been you know, been no problem at all. Now, what's next for the 66 from here on out? I, I know that there's air conditioning plan and eventually E and G police and so forth, but. Uh, without giving away the farm here, can you talk a little bit about the uh, the future progress you hope to make with the 66 program? Well, the the first uh, year or two is going to be doing the derivatives that you just talked about. And plus, you not only do you have a police version, a newscopter version, you're going to be having floats for the tourist market. Uh, that's a pretty big area there. You'll have IFR trainer. You'll have you know the various avionics and instruments as you'll start to expand the package. Uh, for it, and a, a lot of it is is just sitting back and listening to the customers. What do they need? There'll be a cargo hook. Um, that's something that's that's going to be uh, um, in high demand. Now, obviously, the aircraft can can lift a lot and it can carry a lot. So for it to have a really good commercial utility value, um, it needs to have some equipment on it. Those are the things that we're going to be focusing on first. Is is to help our customers make money with the aircraft. <laughs>